All right, let's talk about line requirements. Let's, in, in fact, let's start with main line. There's two choices. You can either go with braid, and the advantages to braid is the ability to choose a thinner diameter, uh, get more line packed on your reel. It increases sensitivity, increases distance, and hook sets are much, much more positive with braid, for sure. Uh, the negatives to braid is there are some uh, line management issues with backlashes on casting reels and wind knots on spinning gear. But those are really the only two drawbacks. And if you do a good job of line management on your, on your reels, I think you're going to find that braid is your choice 90% of the time. Now, what would be your other choice? Well, your other choice would be choosing a mono or a copolymer line. Uh, times when I would use those are, they're a little bit better for finer wire treble hooks, like if you're fishing, for instance, a crankbait. A crankbait is a, is a contact bait. And by having a mono or a copolymer line, it's a lot easier to, to come tight on a fish and not have him open up the treble hook or open up the split ring and all of a sudden he's off. Uh, so those are times when mono works well. Also, winter fishing, crystal clear water. Sometimes, instead of tying on maybe six or eight feet of fluorocarbon line, you can get away with using straight mono all the way to the jig. So think about it in those scenarios. The only other time I think I would use mono, uh, on, especially on a casting reel, would be in, in scenarios when you absolutely have gin clear water and super, super spooky fish. But like I say, that's only going to be a 10 and maybe a 15% uh, chance that you're going to be using that on a regular basis. In most cases, you're probably going to choose braid and that's the direction that I would push you. All right, now we're going to talk a little bit about leader material. Leaders are necessary 95% of the time when you're fishing inshore saltwater, especially for redfish. And here's why. In really gin clear water, wintertime fishing, fishing tight to the bottom, sight fishing scenarios for tailors and things like that, fluorocarbon is superior. It has the light refraction index, that of water itself. So the line is invisible. It's a little bit denser and it's, it's one of those types of materials that just seems like it goes away in the water. So you can get away with a little bit thinner uh, leader material and tie longer links on and they'll go through your guides quite well because fluorocarbon is much slicker. Makes knot tying a little trickier where you might have to put a few more turns on. Now you're saying, why would I ever use a monofilament leader? Well, here's the, here's the truth with monofilament leader. Monofilament leader is actually more abrasion resistant than fluorocarbon leader in many instances. And I use it with all my reaction baits. So if I'm moving a fast moving twitch bait, if I'm fishing a spoon, if I'm fishing a paddle tail where I'm cranking it, straight cranking it through the water, monofilament leader is fine because what does the fish see? He doesn't see that leader. He sees the back of the leader swimming away, the back of the plug swimming away, and he's chasing it down never sees it. So if you're fishing a contact bait or a reaction bait, throwing mono leader is perfectly acceptable and shorter links are even better and easier to cast. They also tie very well. Monofilament leader uh, is very easy to tie because it seats well with braid. You don't need as many turns so the knot strength is very very good and easier to tie. Now let's talk about a few of the knots that are connector knots that you might want to use uh, between your lure and the line to leader connection. The first one you need to know for line to leader connection is going to be the uni knot. The second knot that I use a lot is the Albright knot. And lastly, the knot that I like to connect the lure to the leader is the mirror lure loop knot. My reasoning behind the uni knot is it's the easiest knot system to teach beginners. It's quick and fast in the field, and it's a 100% knot. My reasoning behind the Albright knot is it's a much smaller knot that moves through the guides really easily. In fact, if you, 
if you up your game just a little bit to learn that, that Albright knot, you're going to find that that is going to be your go-to knot for line-to-leader connections with opposing weights where you have one heavier than the other. Lastly, the reasoning behind the loop knot is really simple. The loop knot acts as a hinge and gives the baits a lot more action. Occasionally, I will tie directly to uh, a piece of terminal tackle or to the lure itself with a Palomar knot, but it's a lot nicer to be able to give it a loop knot. That little circle knot allows the bait to almost double the action that it typically would have if you tied it directly to with a direct connect knot. So now we've, we've covered everything. We've covered the braid and mono choices, the versus choice. We've covered the monofilament leader versus the fluorocarbon leader. And I've given you a couple of solid knot choices that will make you a lot more effective when targeting redfish.